Hi, it's Dominic again. We're going to go over a different lesson now. And this is the rationale behind using different speeds of movement. When you walk, when you have gait, when you go a certain speed, it's called walking. If you walk very slowly to the point where you stop, it's called standing. And if you were to take walking and press the fast forward button, you'd call that running. Essentially, they're almost all the same, just different speeds. So, movement, I want you to think about movement as a way of, a way of communicating with your body how you want it to move. When you go to move a load, like an exercise, and you go to push it, you need to overcome that weight with more force to move it. So if it weighs 10 pounds, if you were to just use 10 pounds, you wouldn't move it because it would be a, it would be a net zero. It would be equal. But if you were to lift it with 12 pounds of effort, you would lift it slowly. If you were to lift that 10 pound dumbbell with 30 pounds of effort, it would fly because there would be 20 pounds over that sum, and the, so the speed would change. So what I want to speak to you about is how you're actually communicating within your own body, to your own biology. What you're doing as you use, as we would use, or we have used, different speeds of movement. Okay, take the cable and move it slowly versus, okay, move the cable quickly. Those would each be different ways of communicating to different tissues through using different speeds. And this is a hard concept to begin to wrap your mind around. At least it's hard for me as I still digest it and, and I try to get a feel for it. And when I see it in other people, it makes it a little bit more tangible. So we will, we have, or we will probably use video in our work together as a way of expressing, hey, do you see this? That's a really big teaching tool to see yourself from the outside, kind of somewhat more objectively instead of inside the experience or we're somewhat almost blind to how we look from the outside. What I want to talk about is this idea of force. That, that's, that's the language. That's the language that allows us to speak to different parts of your body, almost different layers of your body. So if we go and we do something quickly, like a really fast push-up, that's going to communicate to different tissues at different layers, at different levels, than if we were to go really slowly. When you do a ballistic or quick movement, if that doesn't conjure up this picture, I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up, but a child, they just move quickly, somewhat pretty much effortlessly through gravity, where if you take somebody, so if you start off with a child, and you take somebody who's, you know, a hundred, versus somebody who's one, they're going to move through this thing called gravity, through this earth sphere, differently, how they manage gravity. One thing you'll notice on the, this side of the spectrum with the youth is that they can use all these different speeds. And when you get to this other side, say you're a centurion and you, you can, you're at 100 years old or so, it's a little bit more rigid, you can't go as quickly. So, oh, let me grab that. So at different times in our relationship, whether we have or whether we're going to, we're going to use different speeds and different types of force to communicate with different layers of your tissue. And that could be the same layer when I might say, okay, now do that quickly. And we might say, okay, now reference these couple of parts while you do it. Or we might say, do it slowly and feel and find these references now. We're doing that for a very specific purpose. And that's because we want to draw out of you that type of conversation with those tissues. Now, when I say tissues, I'm not speaking that it's like this ethereal, different part of your body, but you have different types of muscles, you have different tendons and ligaments, and 
how we speak to them and what ranges of motion we use when we use it quickly. So we might use different positions to speak to those parts. The broader picture is that we're trying to create movement, variety, and variance. So when we use this illustration of these people working through gravity, essentially, so it's lighter in your own skin. You can manage gravity better. You don't really have any pain ever. Your body's comfortable. Or if you develop pain because you're in a certain posture, you can easily get out of it. And a part of what we're trying to elicit and draw out of your body is this kind of, I don't know if you can even feel it from my language, but it's a little bit more playful. It's a little bit more just kind of like, are oh, you just responding? And there are certainly going to be cycles where we're trying to hypertrophy. We're trying to build muscle. We're trying to move from atrophy. We're trying to build muscle so you're stronger. But then we want to take that strength and we want to, we want to transform it a little bit. We don't want you to be rigid and strong. We want to then communicate to different tissues so you can have a nice flow when you're strong. So your rib cage can move with greater ease while you can still push, pull, squat, lunge, or twist seamlessly. You could move weight if you needed to. You could elicit that neural drive to overcome that 30 pounds with 50 pounds of effort if, if you so needed to. But the point is you don't walk around as though you need to find a big dumbbell to communicate with your body to actually get it to move. So essentially the boiled down zooming in communication that I'm trying to show you, it's that a theme in our work is that we're going to vary the speeds of movement to communicate to different tissues. I'm going to do a little time check. To communicate to different tissues. And that bigger purpose there is because force is the language of the cell. If your shoulder were stuck, I remember one time I was working with this guy, he had a frozen shoulder. And we started with a dumbbell and then a cable and it would pull him and he'd have to pull it the other way and pull it out and pull it in. And before he knew it, he could move his arm and his arm was no longer stuck. Well, that's because he could turn on those muscles. He could use that force. So what we would do is we would use different positions and different ways of turning on muscles in your body, different references. And as we did that, we did that change in communication, it would be to turn on muscles so you can continue to move like you did when you were a child. But, of course, you're an adult child now. So communication, different tissues, force is the language of the cell. And sometimes we'll vary the force by using a cable, a band, a dumbbell, the same posture in a different position in gravity, and then we might change those speeds. So when you say to yourself, are we doing the same thing just with a different tool? Possibly. And the reason for that, and I wish that you would ask me at that moment, is to communicate with different tissues and different biology within your body. Okay? So to continue our conversation further forwards, I'm going to shut this down see where we go next.